On the 18th of October, 1950, a member of the British Parliament rose in the House of Commons to address a question to the Foreign Secretary. This book purports to be a true account of espionage. Written by a former German military attaché, it reveals the most astonishing details of a case said to have occurred within His Majesty's Embassy in Turkey in 1944, and in which hundreds of top secrets, including plans for the invasion of Normandy, were stolen and transmitted to the Germans. Has an inquiry into these fantastic charges taken place? Measures have been taken to prevent any future recurrence of such an incredible lapse in security. However, it must be regretfully admitted that in substance, the story to which the honorable member refers is a true one. Exact, our story began on March the 4th, 1944. It was a day of grueling fighting on the widely spread battlefronts of the Second World War, but the sun was shining serenely on neutral Turkey. The very same evening, on March the 4th, 1944, a Turkish minister held a reception for the entire diplomatic corps, the place Ankara, the capital of neutral Turkey. <laughs> If Excellency will excuse me, I have suddenly acquired a rather severe headache. I've had mine for some time. Perhaps from standing too much? From listening too much. Wagner makes me ill. Herr von Papen, I hope your country appreciates you. You are the only unpredictable German I have ever met. remember when I've seen a lady as beautiful as you eat as heartily as you. Just a little more of the salad, if you please. No one admires Turkish food more than I. Still, the prospect of actually dining from a buffet at a diplomatic reception. The number of actual dinners I eat these days is equal to the number of diplomatic receptions to which I'm lucky enough to be invited. Champagne? I have beer, thank you. I've often wondered, Countess, why did you leave Warsaw? Bombs were falling. I felt I was in the way. And why did you come here? You and your late husband had lived so long in England, you had many friends there. I did not consider being bombed in London more attractive than being bombed in Warsaw. You could have returned to your own country, to France. As the impoverished widow of a pro-German Polish count? It would have required courage. I have none. You could have counted upon our protection. I understand you are now protecting my estates and all of my possessions in Poland. Who has them? Field Marshal Goering, I believe. <sighs> At last. Many of our German friends before the war would come as our guests to hunt wild pig. I refused to invite Goering. I couldn't tolerate his killing a wild pig. Seemed too much like brother against brother. Bon appétit, madame. As always, I've enjoyed. Herr von Papen. Yes. Herr von Papen, I need money. 
These must be difficult times for you, I know. Please, don't be diplomatic for just a moment. You can help me. Nothing would please me more, if I can. I want back what belongs to me. Unfortunately, there's a war. After the war, then? I can give you every assurance. But in the meantime, I can be of service to you, to Germany. If I can prove my worth, then afterwards it would be easier. How would you go about proving it? Loan me the means to leave again, here in Ankara. Advance it to me. I can more than make it worth your while. You of all men must know what a fund of knowledge a clever hostess can become. Countess de Visca, are you suggesting that the German government set you up as a spy? I'm suggesting that I can earn my keep. It's a sordid, unrewarding business. Sordid, but not unrewarding. In terms of money, perhaps. What other terms are there? I'm sorry. I'm afraid it's quite impossible. What am I going to do, then? Call upon your friends. I have none that I want. And those who want to be, quite frankly, cannot afford it. I beg your pardon. Yes? Excellence, the British ambassador has just driven up. So soon? Perhaps we can talk longer the next reception, madame. And it's my turn to arrive for the last half of the evening. One thing about being a neutral, I can come early and stay late. And perhaps continue our conversation with the British ambassador? Come, Moises, please, do not look at me as if you had a source of income other than your salary. Excellent. Yes. The Countess Daviska. What about her? I, um, based upon something she said to me, I have reason to believe she needs money. You too, my I am sure that it wasn't I, Excellence, who approached her. Uh, however, it occurred to me... No. Uh, she has many friends, access to many sources. Definitely not. Good night, my Good night, Your Excellence. Why are you? Take me to your office. What do you want? Let's get out of this line. Take me to your office. Don't be a fool, Moisich. I've brought you the opportunity of your lifetime. Choose right now. You can be the envy of the German Foreign Service. Or you can go through life as a diplomatic valet. After all, what if I were a thief? What could I steal from you? I state my proposition, let me warn you not to breathe a word of it to anyone except your chief. My life will depend upon your discretion. A responsibility I do not choose to accept. I'm afraid you have no choice. Your life will depend upon it, too. State your proposition. Very well. Certain British documents, classified as most secret, have come into my possession. 
military and political documents of utmost value to your government, I'm prepared to sell them. The price is 20,000 pounds, English pounds sterling. 20,000 pounds. Who are you? I'm a spy, obviously. And this is your life work, espionage? Not exactly. But I have spent a lot of my life preparing for this day. To my knowledge, no spy in history has ever been paid 20,000 pounds for any information. No spy in history has had to sell what I have to sell. Besides, spies are notoriously poor businessmen. Most of them are professional patriots, frustrated liberals, or victims of blackmail. And in all such cases, the emotional involvement weakens their bargaining position and destroys sound business judgment. Would you consider it a sound business for the German government to pay 20,000 pounds to an unidentified amateur for a set of so-called secret documents? Not so-called. Not secret. Most secret. Top secret. I'm sure they are. And now I have more serious matters to attend to. I'll have an attendant show you out. Moisich. It appears I'm a thing for both of us. First, you'll inform Herr von Papen of my offer. Naturally, he'll have to check with Berlin. I'll give you three days to consider my proposition. On the 7th of March, at 3 in the afternoon, I'll telephone you here and ask if you've received a letter for me. I call myself Pierre. If you say no, you'll never see me again. If you say yes, it'll mean you've accepted my offer. But I must have more information. If you accept, I'll return at 10 o'clock that evening. You will then receive two rolls of film containing photographs of the documents. I will receive from you the sum of 20,000 pounds in English banknotes of small denominations. Should you approve of my first delivery, you can have more. For each subsequent roll of film, the price will be 15,000 pounds. Is this all clear? It is not at all clear. What are the documents? What do they contain? I hadn't thought to bring samples with me. But for one thing, the English have been discussing with the Turks their possible participation in the war. A method of pure supposition. I have the minutes of their secret talks. Herr von Papen would find them enlightening and frightening. What else? The latest Allied timetable of the shuttle bombing of certain Balkan targets. Where and when and by whom and by how many. Go on. The secret minutes of the Tehran conference. What else? Don't be greedy, Moisich. What do you expect for 20,000 pounds? How did you obtain such information? That is no concern of yours, nor is my identity. And please do not have me followed. You Germans have no talent for it. You keep wanting to get ahead of the people you follow. Destiny has held out its hand to you tonight. Take it and hold on. Good night, Moisich.
Good evening, DLO. Pleasant reception, sir? Diplomatic receptions are never pleasant. Necessary and unnecessary, successful and unsuccessful, or non-committal. The faces may be pleasant, but never the motives. Thank you, sir. Oh, speaking of pleasant faces, weren't you at one time in the service of the Countess Staviska? I was valid to her late husband, the Count, when he was attached to the Polish Embassy at the Court of St. James. She was at the reception this evening. I hadn't seen her for years. Is she well, sir? As charming as ever, but not well off. It seems that the Nazis have confiscated all of her possessions. I'm sorry to hear it. She was a lady of great wealth. It was becoming to her. She used it well. A generous, a brilliant hostess, the Countess Tavisca. Yes, sir. More than anyone I've ever known, she symbolized the world in which she lived and which she thought would never end. A world of infinite beauty, luxury and indulgence. Those were pleasant days, sir. Gone forever, I'm afraid. Let us hope not, sir. I put the survey of Turkish manganese beside your bed together with your journal. Oh, yes, thank you. Uh, one moment, sir. Your capsule. Tiello? Have you ever considered the possibility that you might just once forget something? Often, sir. I don't think you'd ever get over it. Nor do I, sir. Good night, Yellow. Good night, Your Excellency. from Berlin has just arrived. Transaction approved. Take every precaution. Essential you determine identity of agent. Expect immediate report after delivery of documents. Signed, Kaltenbrunner. What does he mean, sir, by take every precaution? That you are not to hand over the money until you have developed the films, examined them, and decided whether they are genuine and worth it. That's quite a responsibility. Yes, it is. Money arrived by courier from Berlin this morning. Oh, 20,000 pounds. I have not taken any of it, Moisich. You can count it in your own office. Yes, sir. I had no intention, believe me. It was Are you just sure you I... can handle this alone? Yes, sir. What about developing the films? Photography is a hobby of mine. I have used the dark room often. Good. The fewer people who know about this, the better. Particularly if this fellow makes fools of us. Personally, I sense something bogus about the whole affair. The man may be a clever swindler, Perhaps even a British agent trying to plant false information on us. What was your impression of him, Moisich? Well, sir, I pick him to be a highly trained special agent, perhaps a foreign office career man. British, of course. An Oxford-bred aristocrat, if ever I saw one. You know the type, sir. Arrogant, spoiled, cynical, and completely decadent. Fantastic. By the way, a code name has been assigned to him. Cicero. He's to be referred to as Cicero. Cicero? The name is a personal choice of Herr Ribbentrop. Has it any significance, sir? None that I know of, except the surprising fact that Herr Ribbentrop has even heard of Cicero. Yes, sir. That's all, message. Good luck. And keep your wits sharp. A great deal depends on you. Yes, sir. the money. Money, I see. You have the film? Fetch me a drink while I count it, will you? Scotch whiskey. I'm sure that you must have some. Ah, thank you. Another 
pleasures of duty in a neutral country, you Germans can drink fine Scotch whiskey, and your enemies can fill up on fine German beer. Well done, Moisic. The film. Not yet. You must wait until I develop the film. It'll take only a few minutes. Those are my orders. If you insist, just this once. Are you going to develop the film yourself? Yes. Well, you better drink this. You're trembling like a butterfly. It'll help steady your wings. The door will be locked. I won't open it to anyone but you. short of entering war as open co-belligerent. Interesting snapshots, aren't they? The documents seem to be genuine. Don't be pompous, Moisich. My government has authorized me to make further arrangements with you. I assume you've informed them of the price, 15,000 pounds for each additional roll of film. How did... I said to myself, if I were an ambitious attaché in the German embassy, what would be the combination of my safe? How dare you? 1.30.33, the day Hitler came to power. I imagine that it opened half the safes in Germany, and Hitler's birthday, the other half. What an unimaginative lot you are. Don't be upset, Moisage. There wasn't anything else worth taking. My government is prepared to pay 10,000 pounds per roll, no more. We won't haggle, Moisage. I risk my life to get these documents, 15 of them, at 1,000 pounds each. The price is quite reasonable. You'll pay it. But on the one condition. My superiors insist on knowing who you are and how you obtain your information. Why? Because, uh, because it's highly irregular having an agent in our employ upon whom we know nothing. I am not an agent in your employ. I understand that clearly. All the same, it's, it's essential that it we know. It's unessential that you know anything about me. However, I will tell you this much. I work at the British Embassy. Sooner or later, you'll find that out anyway. As to my name... You have been assigned a code name, Cicero. Cicero? A man of nobility, eloquence and... Dissatisfaction. I like that name. When will you bring more film? A week from tonight at the same hour. And have the money ready. 
on Moisich. Change the combination of that safe. May I suggest one? Try 6, 18, 15. That's the date of the Battle of Waterloo. Good night. Oh, it's you, Diello. Do I disturb you, madam? Not at all. It's always a pleasure to see you. Come in. Take your coat off, sit down and gossip with me. Fortunately, I have a dinner engagement, but he's an undersecretary and used to waiting. Any particular undersecretary, madam? Undersecretaries are never particular, Diello. Perhaps that's why they take me to dinner. It is far more likely that in madam's presence, they feel like ambassadors. Of all the diplomats I've known, you're still the best. It is my good fortune that you've known so few valets. Diello, please. I've spoken to you about this before. You're valet to the British ambassador, not to me. Now, sit down and tell me the gossip. Well, to begin with, the noses of the wives of the diplomatic corps, Axis, Allied and Neutral, have been badly out of joint this past week. Due to? Due to the ease with which the Countess Tavisca once more proved herself the most radiant, beautiful, and sought-after lady in Ankara at last week's reception. Another of your unverified rumors. I was afraid Madame would accuse me unjustly. I'm prepared to name my authority. Who? The British ambassador, no less. He spoke of your beauty and brilliance and hospitality, of how in the old days you were a symbol of everything worth having and wanting. A symbol of the good old days. That's me. The last of the lot. If I'm lucky, I'll get a thousand lira. Diello, will you take it to the pawn shop for me tomorrow? I couldn't face the haggling and whining. Perhaps it would be pleasant for you to go by yourself tomorrow. And bring back the jewels you redeem. I don't understand. Redeem? It's yours. Five thousand pounds. It's from me. From you? <laughs> Is it a joke? It can't be real. There's nothing as real as money. But, dear Lo, I, I don't know when I could pay this back to you. I don't want it back. But I can't permit you to. What must be the savings of a lifetime? They're not my savings. I'm not a saving man. If you must know, uh, a business venture of mine has paid off handsomely and gives promise of far greater profits to come. But what has it to do with me? I propose to advance you these 5,000 pounds in return for certain favors. At the moment, this particular enterprise must remain highly confidential. The ambassador, of course, knows nothing about it, nor does anyone except my business associate and you. The profits will be exceedingly large. I couldn't possibly keep such sums at the embassy, nor do I want to draw attention to myself by depositing the money in a bank. But you could keep it for me. Well, go on. You could leave this grubby room, rent an attractive house, live as you please, entertain as you please. And how would all that be a favor to you? From time to time, I shall want to transact my business in privacy. Naturally, I shall continue to live at the embassy, but you would set aside certain quarters for me. I see. If all goes well, I shall have some 200,000 pounds within 12 weeks. That's the amount I've set as my goal. And then? And then South America. 
to a new life, a new name. That, of course, will require certain papers of identity, passport, visas, letters of credit. You could be of great help in obtaining such documents for me. How? I'll explain that when the time comes. Is there anything else? Nothing. Seems little enough to ask for 5,000 pounds. Are you going to tell me what your business is? Sometime, perhaps. Not now. I see quite a trust you put in me. If I were to be indiscreet, it would ruin everything for you. And for you, too. You seem very sure of yourself. I'm sure of you. Oh? For three years, I was valet to the late Count Stavisky. It is said that no man is a hero to his valet. It is also true that no woman is a mystery to her husband's valet. You know me that well? Well enough. The source of your money has never concerned you any more than the source of your electric light. They became worrisome only when they were shut off. Quite true. But there's pride. I have pride. A great deal I depend upon your pride. You'd find it intolerable to have it known that your wealth was the gift of a servant. Madam, you'll keep your mouth shut tight. Get me a brandy. I shall drink only out of one glass, thank you. Hello. Do you know why I discharged you after my husband died? You said you'd be traveling and wouldn't need a manservant. That was a lie. Yes, it was. I let you go because you made me uneasy. You were much too clever for a servant. Too suave, too wise, too self-contained. I was almost afraid of you. I felt you had an evil genius for something. Little did I know it was a genius for making money. That is a lie, too. That wasn't why I made you uneasy. No? No. You were attracted to me. It was upsetting to feel that way about a valet, and to feel that the valet knew it all the time. Anna, have I offended you? You'll soon be very rich. Everything worth having and wanting. He didn't say that about you. I did. That's how I've always thought about you. And now you want me to go with you, to South America? Yes. To a new life? Yes. Away from the wars, the intrigues, the fears. The poverty. And it would be right for us now, because now, now at last, we are equals. Yes. Where are you going? Madame has a dinner engagement, and we seem to have run out of gossip. I shall cancel the dinner, and we can talk business. You made me a business proposition. I agree to that part of it. As for the rest of the proposition, it's not an impossibility. It's merely an improbability, and above all, an impertinence. Because I addressed you as an equal? No, because you addressed me as a servant. Because in the manner of an inferior, you tried to buy something. You didn't think you merited on your own. Now, let's get down to the details of business. As Madam wishes. My name is Anna. Yes, Anna. Twenty-four hours after the Cicero documents had reached Gestapo headquarters in Germany, Moisich was summoned to Berlin to report personally to General Kaltenbrunner. Incredible! You have the negatives? Yes, sir. Give them to Colonel von Richter. Too good to be true. 25 top secret documents from an unknown agent. This has all the earmarks of a British trap. Sir. Yes? Ambassador von Papen requests me to report that, in his opinion, the documents are genuine. I'm not interested in von Papen's opinion. I want facts, proof, conclusive proof. What's the real identity of this fellow Cicero? What are his motives, aside from the money? Does he have a confederate? You haven't answered any of these vital questions. Unhappily, sir, Cicero is most uncooperative. Teach him to cooperate. That's your job. What do you think of the information on the Tehran conference? Well, it looks authentic, but it's such high-level material that we have no means of verifying it. Exactly. And we can't act on what we can confirm. 
But there's one document here that can be confirmed, this. The operational plan for the shuttle bombing of Balkan targets. According to this, British heavies are going to bomb the Ploeshti oil fields on April 5th. If the raid takes place on schedule, that would serve to confirm the authenticity of the other documents. Good point. Is it your intention, sir, to warn the Romanians? Of course not. What purpose would that serve? Have you made another rendezvous with Cicero? For next Thursday evening. Very well. You fly back to Ankara and keep that appointment. But try to get some facts on the man. Tell him we can keep paying out such sums of money unless we know how he gets his information. I do my best, sir. Try to do better than that. Yes, sir. This is your responsibility, Moisic. I warn you. Yes, sir. Half-witted, paranoid gangsters. Refusing to warn the Romanians. Thousands of dead. Millions of gallons of precious oil and gasoline gone. Because Kaltenbrunner von Richter can no longer admit that anything in the world is genuine. But surely the air it will convince them. Even if it does. Now, they can't admit it. But if Ribbentrop found out Kaltenbrunner made a mistake, and if Goebbels found out about Ribbentrop, and if Himmler found out about Goebbels, my sister, it's time you understood we represent the government of juvenile delinquents. Yes, sir. Well, if Berlin doesn't know how to utilize Cicero, I most certainly do. Have you received an answer from the Turkish Foreign Office? Yes, Excellency. His Excellency will be unable to see you this evening. He's attending a reception. What reception? At the Countess Tavisca's, I believe. At the Countess Tavisca's? I shall be there myself, Excellency. What's all this about? Excellence was invited, but you declined. So I did. I didn't realize. So the Countess has found a benefactor after all. I wonder who. Oh, no, sir. Not a my income. This could only happen in Ankara. And only to the Countess Daviska. Last month's penniless. This month's the Turkish Foreign Office supplies her guest of honor. Call the Countess. Say, I find myself free this evening after all, and would be delighted to attend. You'll have to wake Morrison and ask him to come here at once. Yes, sir. You change back into your jacket, sir. Oh, to, oh uh, uh, thank you, dear.
Turn on that lamp, will you, dear? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, this bulb must be burnt out, sir. I'll have it replaced. Yes, sir. Morrison, sorry to waken you. Get this dispatch off to Whitehall at once. Have this coded and uh, classified as most secret. Upon representation from Turkish Foreign Office, there is strong reason to believe... Yellow, will you shut the door, please? There is strong reason to believe that von Papen is in possession of top secret information, which would indicate leak in security here. Upon receipt of this highly classified message, the Foreign Office in London took immediate action. Let me read you what we received from Ankara early this morning. Upon representation from Turkish Foreign Office, there is strong reason to believe that von Papen is in possession of top secret information, which would indicate leak in security here or Nazi access to secret documents or possibility have broken British diplomatic cipher. Colin Travers, a special agent of British counterintelligence, left London by plane next morning, bound for Istanbul. Colonel von Richter of the Gestapo counter-espionage service left Berlin by plane the same day. Travers and Colonel von Richter arrived at Istanbul the same evening and boarded the Anatolian Express. They reached Ankara next morning. Von Richter carried a Swiss passport, identifying him as Herr Rudolf Hodler, a tobacco buyer from Bern, Switzerland. He was met at the station by a Gestapo agent named Siebert and immediately escorted to the German embassy to confer with Herr von Papen. Travers was greeted outside the station by Keith McFadden, a British agent attached to the embassy at Ankara. McFadden? Glad to see you, Travers. They left without delay to meet with the British ambassador. To begin with, sir, I think we must assume that the source of information to the Nazis is someone here at the embassy. After that has been All ruled out... All our personnel and permanent employees have had previous security clearance from London. <laughs> I've never known a self-respecting spy without a security clearance. Where do you store classified information, sir? Right there in my safe and in the first secretary's. And what about the code room? Under guard, day and night. Don't you think it most likely, sir, that this lamentable lapse in security was due to some unintentional slip of the lip at some party or reception? My lips are not in the habit of slipping, Mr. Travers. <laughs> Nor do I imply that they are, sir. But our material does pass through other hands, it might pass through other lips. Now, McFadden was telling me about a, an unattached lady, a certain Countess Tavisca. Thank you, Diello. You were saying? A certain Countess Tavisca. It seems she's quite recently and suddenly begun to entertain informal gay little gatherings. I assume some of our embassy personnel have attended from time to time. The Countess has a wide circle of friends, which I'm happy to say has included me for some time. Yeah, that circle, no doubt, would also include Herr von Papen and his associates. Mr. Travers, the Countess is doing her very best, I assure you, to live neutrally in a neutral country. Under the circumstances... According to Mac here, her circumstances have taken a startling change for the better. Does anyone know the source of her sudden good fortune? I cannot see that it concerns anyone but the Countess Tavisca. And I certainly cannot see what the source of her income has to do with our problem. <laughs> now, I'm probably just a gossip at heart. Maybe that's why I like my work. Counter-espionage is the highest form of gossip. It is obvious that Ciso is paying the bills for the Countess. Oh. Why else would he choose her villa for his next rendezvous with Moisich? What a strange and sudden and perfect relationship. Too strange, too sudden, and too perfect. The unknown Cicero and the well-known Countess. Well-known for her anti-German sentiments. Yet only recently, she pleaded with me personally for an opportunity to work in our interest. At the suggestion of British intelligence, no doubt. Colonel von Richter, just what will convince you that Cicero is what he says he is, a spy selling us genuine documents of great value for a great sum of money. I've come here to convince myself, Herr von Papen, one way or the other. A talk with Cicero might help. Moisich, when do you meet him next? At the villa, next Thursday evening. Then you will arrange for Mr. Hodler, the Swiss businessman, to be present. 
<laughs> my incognito. I think it's preferable that Moisic remain our only contact with Cicero. I'm afraid you do not understand why I'm here, Excellence. I've come to Ankara to relieve you of all responsibility in our relations with Cicero. I cannot be relieved of that responsibility, except by the order of Foreign Minister Ribbentrop. General Kaltenbrunner expressed the hope that you would not force him to bypass Herr Ribbentrop and bring the matter directly to the Führer. What further instructions has the Gestapo for me? In the future, all documents from Cicero will be sent directly to Berlin. Those which General Kaltenbrunner feels are pertinent to your diplomatic mission will then be transmitted to you. Message, do as you can to make the Colonel's stay in Ankara a comfortable one. Thank you. here who wishes to see you privately. You had a business appointment, I believe. I believe so. I'll take you to him. I'm indebted to her, Moises, for suggesting that I ask you to our little musical evening. Oh, the honor is mine, madame. I hope you haven't found it too subdued. On the contrary, it's been exactly as I would have wished it. Have you known her, Moises, long? We have been business associates for some time. Are you, too, a diplomat, Monsieur Hadler? I suppose you could call me a middleman. There are so many Swiss middlemen. Seems to be a national occupation. What could be more natural? After all, we Swiss have been in the middle for hundreds of years. Come in. I'll see that you're not disturbed. Colonel von Richter, sit down, please. Moisich tells me you're to be the new intermediary. That's correct. Sent from Berlin by General Kaltenbrunner, I should imagine, to see to it that von Papen keeps his hands off the information I supply. Havana's, the finest money can buy. I approve of the change. Moisich is conscientious, but not very bright, and too well known in Ankara. It'll be safer for me to deal with you. Your security is a matter of grave concern to us. I'm happy to hear it. I share your concern. For this reason, I must ask you about the Countess. Have you told her who I am? Of course not. Does she know the nature of your business? No. Then, uh, just what is her relation? My dear Colonel, I did not invite you here to discuss my private affairs. We have some business to transact. Did you bring the money? As always, you will be paid after we have developed the film. During the past six weeks, I've sold Moisage 50 photographs, all of genuine secret documents. That's proof enough of my good faith. Henceforth, you will pay on delivery. The money? Possibly you're no longer interested in the strategic plans of the Allies for the entire Mediterranean area. You mean... a second front? I do not know the number of the front. I do know that in these documents, Mr. Churchill keeps referring to the soft underbelly of Europe. Of course, I could take the phone to von Papen and ask that he himself query the German High Command as to their interest. Very well. Why, you had it with you all the time. Who are you, anyway? If I told you I was, let's say, the uh, valet to the British ambassador, would you believe me? Certainly not. You see? Then at least satisfy my personal curiosity on one point. 
Why are you selling us information? I thought that was self-evident, for money. But you must have some other motive. Perhaps you share our disgust with British decadence, or our faith in the future of Germany. Colonel von Richter, if I have a disgust for anything, it is poverty. And if I have faith in the future of anything, it is in the future of money. But I cannot understand why, on the one hand, you sell us information which will help us to win the war, and on the other hand, you insist upon being paid in money with a very dubious future, British pounds. What makes you think I think Germany will win the war? Apart from all other considerations, apparently you attach little importance to these documents. In the first place, I cannot sell you the ability to make proper use of the information I get for you. In the second place, by informing a man about to be hanged of the exact size, location and strength of the rope, you do not remove either the hangman or the certainty of his being hanged. And now I'm sure you'll want to rejoin your friends. One week from tonight, at the same hour, I shall have more film for you. Good night. Good night. I trust your meeting was a satisfactory one, Monsieur Hadley. Quite satisfactory, thank you, madame. And that you will honor us again soon. The honor will be mine, madame. Good night. How charmingly you Swiss click your heels. An old Swiss custom. Good night. You may retire. Just turn out the light. Thank you, madame. Profitable enough to bring the total to 75,000 pounds. Another six or seven weeks should do it. Dear Lou, why don't you stop now? Why go on playing with fire? What makes you think I am? Oh, don't treat me like an idiot child. Your friend Hodler, he isn't Swiss. Oh? I know a Prussian when I see one. Does it matter to you? Your safety matters to me. So many people are concerned about my safety. I never felt more secure. Well, I don't. And my security depends upon yours. Forgive me. I keep thinking of myself as a man. I keep forgetting I'm a valet who pays dividends. Must you leave so soon? I mustn't stay away from the embassy any longer than necessary. I can't see why a man as rich as you should go on pressing the trousers of the British ambassador. That's where I get my money. I steal the loose change from his pockets. No, oh, before you go, Yellow, get me a drink. Will you? Tell me, where do you plan to settle when you live for South America? Rio. I've never been there. There's nothing like it in the world. When did you decide to go there? Let's go back. I decided that the moment I first saw it many years ago. I was a cabin boy on a dirty tramp steamer. I can remember standing at the rail, looking up at a villa high on the mountainside above the harbor. I could see a man on a balcony looking down at my ship. He was wearing a white dinner jacket. He seemed close enough to touch, and yet he was beyond the reach of anyone. I swore then that someday I'd be that man. You might find Rio de Janeiro not to your liking. Do you have a nationality, Diello? Most people are born somewhere. You're not a native Englishman. What are you? Albanian, English by adoption. You're the only Albanian I've ever known. If you know one, you know them all. I ran away to sea when I was a boy. And then? Finding myself in England, it seemed profitable to become a gentleman, so I went into service. As you have pointed out, I'm not yet a gentleman. But I am the best of the gentleman's gentlemen, which reminds me the ambassador will be wondering what has kept me. What will you tell him? That I was detained by a Turkish chambermaid. He might not approve. Why shouldn't he? Only a woman of my own class would want to detain me, and only a man of my class would permit her to. Diello. Yes, Anna? On the contrary, I think 
think I'll find Rio de Janeiro very much to my liking. During the next five weeks, Cicero sold the Germans 35 top-secret documents, which brought his growing fortune to 155,000 pounds sterling. The Germans were informed of every secret word the British ambassador sent to paper, every secret conference, every secret pact. And yet, despite the unerring accuracy of the information gathered from the Cicero documents, German intelligence refused to act upon it, out of fear that Cicero might be a British plant. As for the British, they had failed to uncover any breach in their security. Travers grew increasingly certain that his first assumption must have been correct, that there was no spy to lay hands on. And so in your three years as her husband's valet, I'm sure you learned more about them both than we could in a lifetime of investigation. Infinitely more, sir. I respect your reluctance to discuss the private affairs of a past employer. It's also reassuring to me, personally. But, Diello, we are at war. I understand, sir. Tell me, did you ever have occasion to hear the Countess express sympathy for the Nazis, privately or openly? To my knowledge, sir, the Countess never spoke of countries, political parties, or groups. The world to her was made up of individual people she either liked or disliked. Would you consider her to have been pro-German? The Countess was capable of being pro-anything, if it made for a congenial dinner party. Then would you consider it possible, under certain circumstances, for her to have become a German agent? Only for money, sir. Of which she has suddenly acquired a plentiful supply? I know nothing about spies, of course, and the way they function, but I can remember that the Countess had a remarkable talent for receiving confidences from important people. The Count always relied upon her for a great deal of information that was otherwise unavailable to him. Thank you, Diallo. That's all. Thank you, sir. I'll be dining at the American Embassy. You may take the evening off. Thank you, sir. A clever chap. Because he supports your theory that the breach in our security was no more than a few irresponsible remarks at one of Anna Stavisca's dinner parties? <laughs> well, frankly, sir, that is a fairly accurate summary of the report I was planning to send to London. I hope you're right. Fact remains, however, that Van Poppen still anticipates every move I make. You may soon be doing some anticipating of your own, sir, about Herr Von Poppen and his moves. How do you mean that? Well, this is extremely confidential, of course, but our cryptographers in London have just succeeded in breaking a German diplomatic code. A code used by their embassy here? That's welcome news, I must say. Of course, they'll discard the code sooner or later, just as we change ours periodically. But for a while, we'll be eavesdropping on the German ambassador. To eavesdrop on Van Perpen. A pleasure I've long hoped for. Nervous, General? This house is far too dangerous a meeting place for us. I wouldn't be surprised if the British were watching it. I haven't yet, but they will soon. They suspect the Countess is a German agent. Are you serious? And all the while you suspected she was a British agent. Amusing, isn't it? Not at all, and under the circumstances we shouldn't have met here. From now on, we won't. Do you know the Aslan Hane Mosque in the old quarter? Why is it you'll find it? We'll meet in the entrance of it a week from tonight at the same hour. Be sure to take your shoes off. The Muslims will resent it if you don't. Childish. To them, no more childish than you're resenting someone's hat being on in church. What am I buying this week? An exchange of notes between the Turks and the British. The Turks have decided to remain ostensibly neutral for the time being. Well, such information is hardly worth 20,000 pounds. Is good news of no value to you Germans? Or are you willing to pay only for storm warnings of approaching disasters you can do nothing about? There's one disaster we can do something about, and about which it is most important for us to have full information as quickly as possible. Sounds exciting. A certain code word has appeared in several of the documents you've sold us. The word is overlord. Do you know what it means? Not the foggiest notion. We are convinced that Overlord is the code name for their so-called Second Front, the invasion plan for Western Europe. What we must know is the place and date, the where and the when. The where and when of the Allies' invasion of Europe. It'd be nice to know. I can understand your curiosity. I'll pay you double for it, 40,000 pounds. Generous of you. 
But is information of that nature likely to turn up at the British Embassy in Ankara? Don't you read the documents you sent us? Not all of them, and never thoroughly. I'm not particularly interested in what they say. I usually just photograph everything in sight that's stamped secret, most secret, and top secret. Well, for your information, last week you photographed a dispatch from London to the British Ambassador. It stated that the Ambassador would receive a copy of the revised strategic plan for Overlord within 10 days. Hmm. Did you say 40,000 pounds? For the where and the when. We'll meet at the Aslan Harne Mosque one week from tonight. Do you mind going out through the garden, Colonel? Not at all. You and the Countess must be running out of small talk anyway. Good night. This was deciphered from the German code we've broken? Yes, sir. Who's seen it? You and I, sir, that's all. But McFadden should hear it. I'll need his help. From German Embassy Ankara to Reich Foreign Minister Berlin. In reply to your query concerning authenticity, documents obtained from Cicero, I'm firmly convinced material genuine. Cicero lives within British Embassy, obviously has access to top secret information. Carlton Brunner's failure to evaluate documents and the Richter's refusal to make them available to me, tragic blunder. Strongly urge you bring this matter to personal attention of the Führer. Signed from Puff. Cicero, Cicero. It's obviously a code name for their informant. Where do we start? With your permission, sir, I'll order a house search at once. It's hardly likely our friend Cicero has left anything incriminating lying about, but something might turn up. But one thing's sure, an open search will put him right on his guard. And that can't be helped. If we can't catch this spy, we've got to frighten him. Perhaps frighten him enough to make him stop for a while. At any rate, we'll gain time. Gentlemen, for the present, I'm forced to leave this matter in your hands. As you know, I'm expected in Cairo tomorrow evening. Until my return, you may, of course, take all the security measures you consider necessary. For one thing, I suggest the combinations of the safes be changed and safety devices installed. Of course. Uh, what about assistance? Do you have enough men? Yeah, we have four other agents in Ankara and other assignments. I can reassign them to this. Whatever you think. Tell me, Travers, do you have any idea who it might be? A dozen members of the staff have access to classified material. Code clerks, attaches, undersecretaries, first counselor, and so on. McFadden, you and I. In short, Cicero could be any one of us. Yes, sir, any one of us. There you are, sir. Be a few days before I get the combination changed with the alarms on and ready to go. Well, just so that I don't set it off by myself, you'd better explain again how it works. There's nothing to work, sir. If you were to turn that dial a sixteenth of an inch in either direction, the alarm would go off. To cut off the alarm. I'm sorry to disturb you, sir. Uh, shall I pack your uniforms? I won't be needing them, thank you, dear Very well, sir. I'll close your bags. And by the way, uh, don't be upset if Mr. McFadden should uh, ransack my quarters while I'm gone. There'll be no need of that, I'm sure, sir. Stone is wet, cold and wet. Acceptable to Mohammedan feet, perhaps, but not to mine. It's 22 minutes late. It's the first time he has never been late before. And you say he hasn't been to the villa all this week? Hmm? See, but has kept a day and night watch. Cicero has not appeared once. And the Countess? She has not entertained. She has gone out a few evenings, alone. See Can it be possible, sir, that the British have found him out? It can also be possible that the British have known about him all the time. Curious how easily Cicero acquired the documents he wanted to sell. And when only once we named the documents we wanted to buy or mysteriously has failed to deliver it. Right. What does the Colonel propose to do now? Precisely nothing. 
all spies in time outlive their usefulness. And I'm afraid, Morsic, that your friend Cicero has just about outlived his, if any. Well done, Signora Antonini. It was nothing, Signor. One of my many pleasant wifely duties. How much did they cost? Five thousand pounds. Another thousand for a set of papers to go with them. Birth and marriage certificates, that sort of thing. And another thousand to help him forget all about us. Money well spent. What about the tickets? Two first-class compartments in separate cars on the Istanbul Express, leaving tomorrow evening. And the ship? An Argentine passenger freighter sailing from Istanbul direct to Rio. When? Day after tomorrow at sundown. Now remember, you have to take no notice of me whatsoever on the train. When we reach Istanbul, we'll go aboard the ship at once. How did it go to the bank? The size of the deposit created quite a stir. The manager of the bank seemed extremely curious. But I managed to satisfy his curiosity on all points. Where well, he took me to lunch. And? He will personally expedite the transfer of funds. The papers will be ready tomorrow morning. How much did that cost? Another thousand. And all of my powers of persuasion, this side of respectability. A little over generous, perhaps. Now, let's see. Five, seven, nine thousand for expenses. That leaves roughly 130,000 pounds in dollars, about 600,000 in Brazilian cruceros, about 11 and a half million. Plus the 40,000 pounds you're getting tomorrow. I pulled out of that particular transaction. The market's getting shaky. I've decided to retire. You have before you an Argentine gentleman of leisure about to take up residence in Brazil. I'm glad. We have more than enough, anyway. We? We have more than enough? My dear Signora Antonini, where I come from, a man's money is his own. And if his wife is a good wife, he gives her some from time to time. Mm. Por supuesto, Roberto. Lo que tu digas. Will you miss being a countess? Not for a moment. Not for one moment. Here's the official correspondence, the ambassador's personal mail. Will you keep it for him? I'm leaving for the weekend. Uh, will His Excellency return tomorrow as he planned? Not to Sunday. I put a list of his calls on the desk. Pity, sir, that so few ladies use perfumed letter paper these days. A great pity. Perhaps you'd better lock up that mail, too, Diallo. As you wish, sir. Oh, Diallo, weren't you away from the embassy between 9 and 10 last night? Yes, sir. Would you mind accounting for your movements? Not at all, sir. I walked for a while on the boulevard, stopped for a drink at the Yuxal Palace, then back to the embassy. Oh, one other question about the Countess again. Do you remember any particularly close friends she may have had in Switzerland? Did she go there often? Very often, sir. The Countess was extremely fond of Switzerland. She went every spring. Oh, then that explains it. The Countess left by plane for Switzerland this morning. I hope she can enjoy it in the style to which she is accustomed. That shouldn't be any problem. She took 130,000 pounds with her. You ready, ma'am?
calling for His Excellency, the British Ambassador. I have a message for the Countess Stavisky. Madame left for Switzerland this morning, sir. I don't know, sir. Uh, Madame said it was for an indefinite stay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yes. No, I can give you no information, Your Excellency, beyond the fact that the Countess Stavisky has withdrawn all of her funds. Yes. You are very welcome. Yes, yes. I can reach Colonel von Richter immediately. Tell the Colonel I can get the merchandise he wanted. However, I cannot deliver it here in Ankara. No, it's quite impossible. I'm being watched too closely. I shall have to ring off now. Tell the Colonel I'll arrange a meeting place in Istanbul. I'm leaving this evening. I'll call you at the German consulate in Istanbul tomorrow. To anyone in the bar, you made a couple of phone calls and then came back here. I think you're on the wrong track sniffing after Diello. After all, he didn't bat an eye when you told him about the Countess. There's something about him, there's something about him. Why, for one thing, should he go out to a cafe to make a few phone calls? What do you want? It's all right. I clean office now. No, not now. His Excellency won't be back until tomorrow. But it's necessary. I wash windows while it's still daylight. Not now, I said. Come back later.
Kesim. Who? Turn off the alarm. Open it up. Yellow. Where's yellow? He just ran out. Seemed to be chasing someone. Follow him, Johnson. Find him and stick with him. Shall I try to hold him? Just find him and report back. Get off a dispatch to London. I want all available information on Yellow flown to me here at once. Give me that dispatch case. Nothing seems to be missing here. How many letters have you there? Four. We locked up five. That letter. Perfumed letter gone, but nothing out of the dispatch case. It's odd. McFadden. Photographs. That Burroughs and Murray wants the approach to the German embassy. We've got to keep him from delivering that film. It'll be sticky grabbing him in public. Our Turkish friends might not like it. We can't kidnap him, McFadden. We'll have to kill him. There's a little matter called Operation Overlord we've got to consider. Send a man out to the airport. After Johnson gets back, you and I'll get out to the railroad station. Siebert, you and Steuben take the train to Istanbul this evening. Marsic and I will take the plane. He's bound to be aboard one or the other. Shall we go armed, Colonel? Naturally. You're to protect Cicero from the British at all costs until we get that film. And after that? After that, Marsic, it will be up to Cicero to protect himself from the British and from us. That's all. See which compartment exactly. Try them all. Compartment is the Jackman area. Excuse me. C'est occupé. Pardon. I will not fail you, sir. Uh, this compartment is occupied, gentlemen. Uh, may I see your reservation? Uh, we didn't have time to get one. If possible, we'd like to purchase a compartment in this car. I'm sorry. There are none available. We'd be happy to make it worth your while. They're not available, gentlemen. I shall have to ask you to move on to the next car. Put that away and fill your pipe instead. There's nothing to do between here and Istanbul, but see to it that none of them get off. I suppose the Nazis have already got the films. No. They wouldn't be playing watchdog for him if they did. They're going to take good care of him until he hands it over. And that'll be somewhere in Istanbul.
So by the time you receive this, my dear ambassador, I shall be far away from Ankara. Far away from intrigue and uncertainty and humiliation. I shall be settled, I hope, in a new life of peace and security and self-respect. You have spoken so often to me, my dear friend, of Tielo, the perfect valet who served my late husband and who serves you now. Surely I can offer no greater proof of my affection for you and my devotion to the Allied cause than to inform you now that your trusted Diello is a German spy. I know that both you and your government. <laughs> Just a few minutes, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Did you sleep well? I slept extremely well. Guards to the left of me, guards to the right of me. You are my bodyguards, aren't you? Or are you my assassins? We are to see that no harm comes to you from the British. Honored. It puts me in right in a class with Norway and Denmark and Holland and any number of things you're protecting from the British. And besides, if anyone were to lay a hand on me, I could expose and ruin this film in a matter of seconds. You are in no danger at all. We will stay at your side and see you safely to the German consulate. Don't be whimsical. I've come to give you a message from Moisage. Tell him he's to meet me at Hakim's restaurant near the watchtower at six o'clock sharp this evening. We would prefer if you come to the German consulate at the same hour if you like. No, thank you, although I'm tempted. So many more people go into German consulates than come out. I've often wondered what possible attraction could keep them there so long. We must have some guarantee that you have the film. I thought you were the silent partner. Here's all the guarantee you'll need. Don't unwrap it. It's a strip of film. Have Moisich develop it and you'll see a piece of the document that Colonel von Richter wants to buy. I'll deliver the rest of it when Moisich meets me and pays me 100,000 pounds. 100,000? I forgot to tell you I raised the price. Ready, Moisich? Yes, sir. Remember to be extremely friendly. Give him the money first. As soon as you have the other portion of the film, come straight back here. Yes, sir. You know what to do after that. There is a problem of the Turkish police. It is hardly likely you will choose to kill Cicero on a crowded street or in the presence of a policeman. On the other hand, it is hardly likely he will go to the police himself, not with 100,000 British pounds in his pocket. Yes, sir. Now, good luck. The city was created by Allah primarily for the convenience of spies. Nobody ever found anybody in Istanbul. Anything going on here? Well, von Richter and Moisich went in. Likewise, our two playmates. Nobody's come out yet. Moisich, my dear colleague, I'm delighted to see you. It's far too early for civilized dining, but I have a busy evening before me. Will you have something to eat? I'm not hungry. Do you feel faint, perhaps? Then sit down and have some Turkish banana brandy. 
It stimulates the blood and makes heroes of all who drink it. I must accustom myself to pouring drinks from a sitting position. It isn't easy to break the habits of a lifetime. Let's get on with the business. Did you bring all of it? 100,000? If I were a gentleman, I would assume that the money is all here. Unfortunately, I shall not be a gentleman until I've finished counting it. Do you speak English? Uh, listen, I'm looking for a friend. He, uh, he may be in a private room. Do you have private rooms? He's occupied. Then he must be in there. I'll just... I'm sorry. He not wish to be disturbed. But he's expecting me. I'm sorry. You will sit here, please. Time for using your wits and a time for blasting away for my We've no monopoly on blasting away in this room. Those two dim-witted supermen would drop us before we got clear of this table. But he may be handing over the films this minute. As of this minute, we don't want the films. They're worthless. Plans can be changed, you know. We want Cicero and we want him alive. So he can tell us just how much the Nazis have found out. Come to think of it, for exactly the same reasons, the Nazis must want him very much dead. You're balmy. You're completely balmy. He'll jump at us. My friend may not know we're waiting. Would you give this to him, please? Yes, sir. Abdi Bey, how can I ever thank you enough for your hospitality, courtesy, and kitchen? It is always a joy to see you, Diallo. It takes me back to old times. This is a very not worrying. Gil is loud, then. Thank you. No answer required. Who was that note from? What was in it? Would you like to purchase a photograph of it? Why so nervous, Moisic? This is the greatest day of your life. When you die, Hitler will dip you in bronze and name streets after you. Can't you count a little faster? Haste makes waste. You've grown fond of me, is that it? You're troubled because you know that I haven't much longer to live. Those two men are here to protect you from the British. Which two men? I didn't say anything about two men. I really moisted you and your guilty conscience and big mouth. Here's the film. Has it occurred to you that our roles are now reversed? That the British may try to kill you? How does it feel, being me? Keep a stiff upper lip, Moisich. That's one thing I have learned from the British, the importance of an exterior. Travers, I'm touched by your solicitude. I'm happy to accept your offer of protection. Imagine me, of all men, with a British sword and uh, a British shield. Personally, I'd rather slit your throat. Impractical. In that case, I'd be unable to tell you the things you want to know. You've no idea how confused the Nazis will be to see you protecting me. They still half suspect I've been a British plant all along. We'll see you safely to a taxi and then to the British consulate. That would be almost back where I started from. No, thank you. We'll walk away together and then say goodbye. Listen to Ellen. We'll protect you from the Gestapo, but we intend to take you alive. I have no intention of being taken alive. We'll get the Turkish police to arrest you. It's against the law here to carry a weapon, McFadden. Did you know that? However, first things first. Shall we begin by startling the Nazis with your concern for my safety? You seem to disapprove of me. You're the most cold-blooded thief, traitor, and criminal I've seen in a lifetime of looking at human trash. What a pity. I rather hoped I'd look like a gentleman. Yes. 
Cicero and the British? Put that away. Too many people. You must believe me, Colonel. The British held us off. They were protecting him. Nonsense. But they let him get away, sir. What's more, back in the restaurant, they passed Cicero a note. It has no logic. It does not make sense. An urgent dispatch for you, sir, from His Excellency the Ambassador. Moisich. What's the delay? I spoiled the first print. What? I was so nervous, but the second one is almost ready. Oh, hurry up. Sir, they fit together perfectly. D Day for Operation Overlord is tentatively set for early June along the coast of Normandy and Cherbourg Peninsula. Carl, did you hear it? Yes, I heard. Now you hear this an urgent dispatch from Von Papen. I've just received a personal letter from Countess Anna Staviska naming Cicero as British agent. I'm unable to corroborate the accusation because Countess has left country. But in view of her past efforts to ingratiate herself with us, I'm compelled to believe her charge is true. I don't believe it. I've always believed it. From the first, I told you so. I know the British and their childish tricks. I don't believe it. The earlier documents, they were genuine. Events proved them genuine. Of course, they had to be. So that we would swallow that big lie, that one. I nearly paid with my life for this. I knew it. I knew it all along.
Two gentlemen have come to see you, senor. Your banker and another gentleman. Senor da Costa, at this hour? Very well, have them come out. Senor da Costa, an unexpected pleasure. Senor Antonini, please forgive this intrusion. May I present my friend, Senor Santos? I'm honored, Senor Santos. I've looked forward to meeting you, Senor. Please sit down, gentlemen. Will you join me for dinner? Thank you, Senor. We have dined. Some wine, perhaps. Senor Antonini is already known in Rio for his exquisite taste in wine. Are you associated with the bank, too, Senor Santos? No, Senor. With the Brazilian Department of Investigation. Ah. Then I assume you investigate Argentine citizens who settle in your beautiful city. Among other things, yes. Have you discovered some irregularity in my papers? No, senor. Your papers are all perfectly in order. Uh, there is an irregularity, however, senor. It is a matter of your account at the bank. Am I overdrawn? As of yesterday, I had approximately seven million cruceros to my account. I was referring to the bank draft with which you purchased this villa. As I recall that transaction, I paid the full sum in cash, 25,000 pounds sterling. That is correct. What seems to be the difficulty? The money has been returned. What on earth for? It's counterfeit. You have a distorted sense of humor, senor. The money is counterfeit. So is the money which you exchange for Brazilian currency. It is all counterfeit. Uh, believe me, senor, I do not wish to leap to conclusions. A gentleman of your obvious refinement, perhaps you are an unfortunate dupe. This currency has been in circulation for months, and the British authorities have only recently detected the forgery. I have samples here of every series in your possession. They are the most skillful facsimiles I have ever seen. Signor Antonini, I implore you to cooperate. You see, we know that these counterfeit notes were printed in Germany. The British have established that beyond the shadow of a doubt. And so far, they have turned up in three places. Here in Brazil, in Turkey, and in Switzerland. Switzerland? Over 100,000 counterfeit British pounds were confiscated there recently in the possession of a political refugee, a lady. It would be in your interest to tell us where and how you got this money. Switzerland. Believe me, senor, this is no laughing matter. <laughs> it is my unhappy duty to inform you that you are under arrest. <laughs> Anna. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Anna. <laughs> Poor Anna. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.